Now we go to the back ahead and we look at the right and left hemisphere of these areas, plus this, the posterior cingulate within. You can look at this person here, bell shaped curve is beautiful. Here's memory areas. Um, this is this was actually attention, and this is visual perception. This is memory. You can see the memory area got much better. All the other ones were pretty good. Um, but that's again the sensory system. Response system is also is a major player, and you can see this person has orange PCCs, which is associated with trauma, also addiction, largely normalized. Now the reason why, again, I call this like a late mid map. It's post 30 hours, but it's the late mid and, and general labeling. Because now we're going to do a few more sessions. We start off, we predict how many sessions we would generally, to, to fix this up, we probably put like 10 sessions. It probably needed 12, probably needed 14. But that is, a, a, it's a remarkable change. I was just thinking the other day, we, we can actually see how much learning there is each session. And we get these results of, of changing someone's brain about 10% or 20%. And I was sort of like, at first thinking, well, 10% is not that much to change someone's brain. And I thought, wait a second, if I took some kids and had them go out there and practice some sport, if they could improve their skills 10% each time they came in to my coaching, they'd be playing in the professionals <laughs> within, within days. Um, so improving 10% of the brain function is really a lot. You know, 5% would probably be a lot. 2% uh, would probably be reasonable. Um, so, uh, so again, be, to be able to change someone from being sort of having probably issues with hypervision, there's probably other issues going on with this sense of lack of nurturing or self-nurturing, um, addictive processes, seeking out substances or behaviors to make it feel well. To get to that point when it's like this, by just in two months time, probably came in 15 times for 30 hours, usually two hour sessions, 15 times to be much better. That's not much of a cost in, in time or, or effort. Um, okay, still got some issues here, and that's why this probably won't even address yet because we have priorities of what we go after first, and this is much more significant. Uh, we have some 18s and 7s, and here you can see the neuromarkers associated. Let me go to, so there's only two neuro, neuromarkers showing in her right now, the 20s out here, a little bit yellow. Um, there were a lot more that could have been. Um, let me go and show you that in this, in the template, because we, do, we don't, tell the person what neuromarkers we could see, we only tell the ones that are, can apply to them. So we have the social anxiety and OCD marker that comes out of scientific literature, we've seen in our cases. Um, area 17 is kind of interesting, sometimes it's uh, it's an aesthetic, visual aesthetic, to over responsive to visual patterns. We do see uh, ADD or attention deficit is likely to start or distractibility. The fully, we get it, what it is, uh, if Broadman area 7R, is a problem. We see distractibility. Sometimes we see dyslexia or vulnerable dyslexia on 7L, but it's all about in interpreting. Here's her 7Rs. They're probably good. Blue can be a strength, like I say. Sometimes it's like, why are they putting so much effort there? Um, but often it's like, okay, it's uh, mildly, we don't worry at all. Um, again, it's like, it's about distribution of, of, of uh, resources. You know, we can, everything, there's a basic rule of the nature is that you know, life behaves when it gets its resources. When uh, its resources are threatened or gets deprived, then you have, then it doesn't behave, it misbehaves, you have more chaotic responses. Well, in the way that's, in a global sense, that's what's going on in the world when we have a lack of, um, the, the distribution of resources is not uh, smoothly, you know, it's, it's too coarse and how, who gets what. And in the brain, it's the same case. If you get the problems are come about with how are the resources being delegated, blood flow and oxygen and, and the other things that it needs. Um, and if it's if it's too coarse and it's not distributed well, you you have problems. You have certain reptilian systems which try to override other systems and they dominate. They don't stay part of the team. Um, as we get them to this balance point where things are being distributed well, they, they're more part of the team and more going to efficient, efficiently function. Okay, so we go to the middle part of the head. Middle part deals with a lot of motor and body representation. All very good for here. This area 32 is actually underneath there. Um, it's right down here and it deals with what I call mind reading. It's one of the main functions it deals with. Contextual rules. Um, it's involved in, it's involved in problem solving. And you can see this is a, now if I didn't really go over this, I should show you now I can go over it. If you go back to the legend, there's this maturational sequence. I gotta pull this way up here to make it, let you see it clearly. 
So we, we, we want to see the brain head towards this direction. That's what we want. It's that bell-shaped curve in the eyes closed recording condition. And you, you can see these are more primitive ways. So yeah, this is decortication. This is the more, when the, the a child, you can see it's immature. There's some other things going on. You can have harmonics, little bounce things up here. But in the one I'm just showing you right now is about right in the middle. It's maturation. That's one of the issues. Okay, so that's uh, that's understanding others in essence. This is part of the uh, the tool set that we use to understand others. Okay, how we respond? You see all that yellow in there, and we have personal boundaries are are, are finalized in area five. How much we let other people recruit us to their needs, and six is how much we subject other people to our needs, to how much we try to recruit them, and we the neuromarkers again. Uh, her neuromarkers got, were gone. When this is the neuromarkers of, of the current me measurement. And you can see it's largely green in all cases. Um, but let's go back to show you what the other neuromarkers were. So you can have, again, the neuromarkers are what we're comfortable in describing as with problems. Area five, we have problems with aggression. On the right side, typically it's the outward aggression. In left side is more inward aggression or passive aggression. Uh, violent, it's actually a violence marker when five is really messed up. Area six, can deal, it deals with social boundaries, can have sexual problems, um, behaviors, uh, childish behaviors, excessive narcissism. Um, so it's, it's a sign of being timid. People who are impaired, um, like if you, someone who's having dementia, the sixes will go orange. Uh, you know, they, they, they stop representing others as separate from themselves, um, typically. Um, you see that in all kinds of conditions. Whenever you see someone who's emotionally, physically challenged, the caretaker and the, the individual with the challenges uh, will be showing more uh, yellow sixes. And again, show you what sixes, where the sixes are, they're up here. This is showing the nearly perfect norms. <laughs> That's just a template. Okay, the motor system and the social functioning system, uh, uh, like social motor system, you call it, especially on the right side, if this issues can be sometimes good, athletic, but other times it's hyperactivity or being agitated. Uh, Brahmin area 31, see borderline tendencies, Brahmin area 32, that's the mind reading, but it can also be a sign of you being bullied or, and we've seen people who've been uh, abused, stalked, um, and bullied will show that having a problem. All right, so she had something there, but it probably wasn't from being bullied. It was more probably, in, it was the underdevelopment of trying to understand all this. It was a childishness. This person kind of came in being kind of young for a 25 year old, 25 going on 15 kind of sense to him. Now we go to the front of the head and the front of the head, you can see these regions here. Now we got much more of that delta activity and, and theta activity at low frequency, everything below six activity, more decortication. But you can see with the training, we're getting that reduced and we're getting more alpha peaks. Look at that one, beautiful. Um, okay, and the response system. Now blue is like, sometimes blue, again, this could be a strength. Deep blue is not usually a strength. Deep blue is a, really that system is not communicating with its neighbors very well. Um, and so that's a left 10L is your analytical sense of self, your priorities and plans for yourself. The right side is more like the social brain, uh, who you let in, uh, who you, uh, the, your, who you decide is your friends and foes. Um, Levin's deal of governing one's appetite typically. This one we've learned is kind of like deals with loners uh, or tendencies or how you deal with authority. Um, organizational elements are done in broker's area. We were about the 38s, those are terminal polar sense of self is there, but the amygdala is uh, uh, pretty close to there being governed. So when we see orange, in the uh, 38s, we worry about fight, uh, fight and flight issues. Um, interior singlets, you got pain sometimes, monitoring, also OCD can be in there. Um, normalized, a little bit yellow still in ACD, ACCs, probably a little immaturity still in her because she was very immature and then she got much better with very little effort. So she probably still hasn't matured that much. Um, we only show this marker here. And like I said, yellow, we sometimes see people will lie a lot when it's yellow, uh, but the actual, uh, there's more neuromarkers in the front of the head here they are. So area nine, and we can see, even see, you know, um, the uh, attachment disorder markers are so sensitive if the father wasn't present or the mother wasn't, wasn't present, especially the mother wasn't present. Um, area nine will be messed up, um, father sometimes. Um, fear, anxiety, we often now we have this COVID worry we see in 38L showing up often when the, the 38L is is this when this is orange um, or yellowish sign of anxiety.
generalized anxiety. So those are the, more, uh, the again, the neuromarkers. Here's where we put the, just the general behaviors. And we talked to the person as we we're going through the report to figure out what these things mean. What does it those mean to put more energy into those areas and, and let your instincts run free in, in these other areas where the yellow is are. Um, the last thing, we look at the, the single hertz. This is the sensory system again, because it's the activity levels. We don't want pink and we don't want blue. Pink is excessive, blue is a deficit. And you can see there's a little bit still going on. This is uh, the, that because she's still going faster than normal. That's the uh, high end of the alpha range. Um, but showing a deficit in that theta still. Not as bad. Um, again, I told you, this is a much harder to, to change. However, it's a minor player. The response system will get you much more smooth behaving um, and less having problems emerge. And that's what we're seeking is to prove this the most. Um, we do want to get more alpha activity in, in the ice closed condition, showing that's a sign that you're able to marshal all the cells together and fire and act as one. Okay. And then uh, the final thing, we don't use show in a remap, but we do usually give a sample of the EEG charts. And we also have what's called a maturational table that we'll often use, but not in a remap, to help people to go over what areas of the brain are, are uh, where they are in terms of their functioning. All right, so that's a brain map. And then we go ahead and then we perform neurotherapy to get you to the, to the post world there. All right, thank you for listening.